So here's my next new saw. We're going to name this one uh, Tesla. This is the uh, T540 IXP battery powered top panel saw. This saw comes in a kit. You can get it to saw two BLI 200X batteries and the QC500 charger. It also comes with a uh, gear bag too, and it comes in retail on this 1K right there. But uh, I got this one with a 14 inch bar. Uh, it comes with a 43 gauge uh, chain on it right there. And these little things are uh, wicked for up in the tree. It with uh, full of oil, it weighs 10 pounds, five ounces with the BLI 200X battery on it. Just an absolute little beast of a saw. Awesome up in the tree because you don't have to crank it and it cuts. It insanely cuts. That's about the only way to uh, to describe it there. Uh, the way it works is, is you just uh, power it up right there i've already been running it some this morning it's got an economy mode which uh limits the rpms on the uh, chain so it doesn't turn as many rpms on the chain there so it'll it'll run longer on the regular rear handled saw this like this one right here the uh, 540 ixp with a 16 inch bar i made 43 cuts with it in a 10 inch diameter oak with like i said a 16 inch bar on it and this one's got a 14. i was running a 300 size battery on that saw this one's a 200x so it would be pretty comparative as far as that goes and but i was hammering it too on that but 43 cuts 10 inches diameter is a lot on a battery battery management on these is really really good they've got fans on them that keeps the batteries cool as you're running them and so tomorrow I've got, well, I'm actually going to get in the tree with it here in just a little bit. And then tomorrow I've got a big job that I'm going to be doing and uh, working through and, and t tackling it with this saw. I've got a, a big gun that's got to come down from the top down, be doing that. So like I said, this saw is 10 pounds, 5 ounces full of gas and oil, the T540, a gas powered saw is 10 pounds 11 ounces full of gas and oil so when you power it on if you've got the brake on that light flashes right there on it when you got the brake off it does not flash so this is a uh, wide open it does have a slide it's got a two uh two-piece lock on it so you can't go down with that you actually have to slide this up forward so when you grab it you just grab it like that right there get that up and then you can go down with it where it releases the safety <coughs> that's wide open <coughs> so you can hear it on the economy mode like i said brake on brake works same way when you hit this the chain is locked on it right now it won't do anything even if you hit the trigger, uh, break off, and she's ready to go. Break on. So uh, you just kill it. You just touch that right there is all you do to kill it. Power it up. Hit that. Let's break on it. Uh, if the brake is off, the saw automatically powers down, I think within a minute or so, may be wrong on that, but it powers down pretty quick. If you've got the brake on, the saw stays powered up a lot longer with the uh, with the brake on. So this, uh, my 572, I nicknamed it the Beast. My 550 is Screaming Demon. My T540 gas saw is uh, Felicia. And we're going to call this one Tesla. And I've got to think of a name for my, uh, for my 562. I hadn't, I hadn't, I may call it Skippy or whatever, or, or Zip, I may call it Zippy. That's what I'll, I'll call it Zippy. We'll name it Zippy. That's what we'll do. And so this is going to be a, uh, a good addition to my arsenal. It's powered down right there. It does come with two, um, Tethers for the back. You can put your lanyard 
on, let me get the camera up here where you can see it. You can put your lanyard on this one, and then you can clip this to your belt right there. Just hook it on your shim beaner or accessory carabiner and where to hang right there on your side. But I did a lot of sawing oh, one identical to this one uh, last weekend up in a tree or a couple of different trees and just absolutely fell in love with it. And actually, I was supposed to have this thing last Friday. I was supposed to have gotten it then and uh, had a little snafu going on on that. So it ended up getting shipped in and got it this morning. I actually went out to UPS and picked it up this morning because I'm kind of at the end of the end of the route and uh, I didn't want to wait on it all day because I'm like I said I'm about to throw a rope up in a tree and get up in it and, and mess with it. I got some more trimming to do here uh, so I got it got it home put it together I already had the batteries I did get the batteries last Friday got them all charged up so they're ready to go I did put my foot ascender on my, my spikes there last night I did that I've got uh I've got all of my saws all ready to rock and roll. And for a big job there tomorrow, they're all sharpened up. Uh, swapped uh, spark plugs, you've seen that at the uh, beginning of the video, or maybe at the end, of the, probably at the end of this video. I'll put it in at the end of this video. In my uh, 550 and 572, did that. Look good. Those saws have, have done phenomenal for me. They, uh, the 572 is almost two and a half years old, and the 550 now is over two years old. And I've done nothing but clean them and gas and oil them. I did put an air filter in the 550 XP Mark II. A, com a cool fact about the, uh, the 550 and the new 562s, they both have the same air filter in them. So those air filters are interchangeable. Same part number, all that stuff like that. If you have an older 562, you can adapt adapt it over to the new stuff if you want to. And I would suggest doing that if you if if you got one. I would get to go to the dealer and get the part number and and swap it over to that. But then your air filters will uh, will earn change on them. But so yeah, uh, that's that. I'm about to uh, go in and get this video ready and. And then I'm going to play in the tree and get all my stuff, rest, everything loaded up for to, uh, tomorrow. So I uh, hope all y'all have a good weekend. Uh, gosh, there is no telling. We got around six inches of rain here or so, something like that. So uh, tons and tons of rain. So we'll catch y'all later. Later, taters. Yeah, that's the 572 right here. This is a plug I just pulled out of it. That plug has been in the saw for two years now. I'll we'll stick one in it and keep on rolling. I want to show something else here too. I got my tool. If you can see that, it may glare, maybe too bad. Look how clean the top of that piston is right there. Sun gun looks good, man. This is the plug that I just pulled out of the uh, 550 right there. See it? Let's see what it looks like. This saw is two years old, a little over two years old this month now. Get it earlier in the month of March, so I'll stick one in it too. So that's what the inside of this 550 looks like. I've actually got a, uh, I've got the tool coming that I can hook up to these, the Husqvarna stuff and tell the hours on it and all that. I just hadn't got my hands on it yet, but it's, I should have it any day now and I'll be able to tell the hours that uh, I've got on these saws here. All right, this saw needs a sprocket. Spins right off. It's not about how hard you hit it, it's how quick you hit it. See there in the sprocket. Uh,
you can see the you can see the difference the new ones on the inside right there you see they got those lines that's how you know when the sprockets wore out see the lines are just about gone on this one right here I'll go ahead and stick a put this new one on it on there I'll put a little grease on that uh, needle bearing right there while I got it out. Alright, let's put it back together in reverse order. Left-handed three and one of these things. So I pretty much tear those saws down like that. Basically, almost after every tree job that I do, and stay on top of them as far as the the maintenance goes, and. And keep them cleaned up, keep the bars and rails cleaned out of them and, and all that air filters knocked out. So I just, that way when, when I show up on a job, I have no issues. I must saw stay sharp and just crank them up, take off, run and roll. I think that's very important when you show up on a job at a property owner or homeowner or, or whatever it is, when you show up, if you, if everything you got is running right, working right, and there's no issues, and you look professional, and you the safety aspect helmet, and you got on all your PPE gear, I think that uh, that speaks volumes to a lot of people because the world we live in, everything is is, is safety oriented, and so anybody that works out and about, they're familiar with the safety and. I think it just, it makes a bold statement for the individual, you know, your, you, your company, who, whoever uh, that might be. And also, it keeps you from just having to piddle with something and work on something while you're on a job because there's nothing more frustrating than to show up somewhere and something is not working and you have to work on it or, or go back or, or, you know, whatever you got to do. But uh, you can see in the end of this video, there's a Sugihara bar. That's a brand new 20 inch just laying right there on the table. And then I've got a, uh, I got a 24 that was actually supposed to have been delivered yesterday that I ordered from uh, H&L or HL down there in Florida. And, uh, it looks like it's hung up down there in Macon, Georgia right now. So, uh, it'll probably be this weekend or Monday before I get it. But I, I ordered the 24 is to go on, uh, the 562 is what is what it's gonna go on that saw there. So maybe I'll have it. Uh, I got plenty of chains for for everything. I've got a. I, I should have showed the box of of chain. I actually took all my chains, the boxes of them, and I put them all in one cardboard box. And it looks like going into a dealer or something. There's so many boxes in it, but. Uh, Remember the people in Alabama, there's a lot of stuff tore up over there. Uh, south of Birmingham, kind of the rim around it right there. I uh, even got a text from uh, Mitch Sutton this morning. He lives over around the Roanoke area, which is on the far side of Alabama, right against the Georgia line over there. And boy, it tore stuff up over there. And then I talked to Jeremy and uh, Jeremy Osteen and David Breeden. Uh, Jeremy lives in Gartersville. And uh, David lives in uh, Kingston, which they're right there side by side in Georgia. And man, it tore up a bunch of stuff over there too. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of people out and about running saws. And this is kind of a bad time because it's hard to find saws right now. Saws are, uh, saws are pretty scarce. You have to kind of uh, be in the know a little bit to, to be able to get your hands on saws. Uh, a lot of these dealers uh, don't have them, stuff like that. Uh, North Park Power Equipment still had a pretty good selection but yesterday, but I imagine after this storm right here, they're probably fixing to get white slap out on saws.
But if you're out and about working the storm timber, be very careful. Read that tree. Um, pay close attention to the loads on it. If you can get it cut off from the stump first, start from the stump and work your way up and get that pressure relieved off of it. But be very careful while you're out there messing with it. And if it's something that uh, that you even have a doubt that you don't think you can handle, walk away from it. Because yeah, it's not worth getting wiped out, man, and hurt or injured or crippled or, or you know, even killed uh, by a tree. Let somebody that knows what they're doing uh, handle it and take care of it for you. You know, because it's, it's way better off doing that than, than getting hurt. So... I'm here. I'm available uh, for tree work. Uh, you can contact me. My email is down below. That's the best thing to do is email me. And, uh, and then I'll get up with you. And so uh, hit me up. You need any any help with some tree work. So appreciate all y'all watching. And, and all, we're going to roll on through this weekend. And I'm about to get really busy here. So we'll uh, catch y'all later. Later, taters.